please tell me your name and where you were born. My name is Lois. I use Carter as my middle name, Hardy, and I was born in Long Beach, California. So what do you remember about the place where you grew up in Long Beach? I really don't remember that much because we left just before I was four years old. And I do remember playing in the little postage stamp of a front yard with my dog. And uh, I was almost four when we moved to Montebello and uh, had a, uh, my folks had their house built to suit them. Small house, as I realize now, but uh, it was brand new. And in an orange grove, we had 96 orange trees and assorted other fruit trees that my folks planted. What were the chores and family duties like around the house? Well, as I got a little bit older, I was always uh, helping mom. She'd make sure that I dusted the underneath part of the dining room table because I got to crawl around on the floor. It had braces across. And so I did the dusting and whatever she said, helped with the dishes, um, just housework. And I, we raised chickens and rabbits. So I would help uh, dress out the chickens and the rabbits. I could never deliver the coup de gras, but my folks did. And then I would help dress them. We sold chickens um, at the street to order and sold rabbits because during wartime there was meat rationing, but uh, chickens and rabbits were not rationed, so it was a good source of income. For me, everything went in the bank for my college fund. So what were your school days like, your elementary school days? What do you remember? Um, I went to a parochial school in East Los Angeles. The reason being the nearest public school was three quarters of a mile away, no sidewalks, no one to walk with. And my folks didn't want me to be a latchkey kid. And my mother was teaching in East Los Angeles about a mile from the parochial school. So she would drop me off in the morning and pick me up in the afternoon. And so I attended some faculty meetings when I was a youngster because she would come get me real quickly and then dash back to her faculty meeting. And I finished eighth grade there. Um, was a good experience. I'm still in touch with one of my friends. In fact, two of my friends from there. Now, do you have any memories, or did your parents instill any memories of the Depression and, and uh, what that meant to people? Um, I don't remember a whole lot of the actual Depression, but I do know that things were tight with my folks. My mother said she would save until she got 25 cents ahead and in grocery money and would buy a little fruit and can a jar or two and uh, she also said one time that after my sister died after they paid the funeral expenses and the hospital bill they had fifty dollars to their name and they'd been married something like um, almost seven years so it, things were tight my dad was working in the oil field and they were going to lay off half of the men and the employees got together and asked the owner if they could work half time, work alternate weeks, so that everyone got a little bit of work. And so he would get, I think it was about $54 a month. And they were paying $25 a month rent. And he talked the landlord into cutting it to $20 if he did the yard work and any maintenance. And what are your fondest memories of your childhood? Um, having lots of room to roam on our property, uh, climbing trees. Uh, I could climb the orange trees and my folks paid me 25 cents a wheelbarrow load to pick oranges so we could sell them out at the street for eight cents a pound, remember that? And I got to climb trees and <clears throat> pick the ones up high, didn't bother with the ladder. But I could explore and I, uh, I raised rabbits, as I said. Uh, I got up to 30 some does, I think, and I think we had about three bucks, so we raised a lot of rabbits. And every penny of the money from the rabbits, from mainly the skins, uh, <clears throat> because there was a large market for it for the military, uh, every penny of that went into the bank. I was not allowed to touch it. And my folks paid for the feed 
two dollars a hundred pounds I remember and uh, I when the war was over in 1945 number one there was no more demand for the meat and the skins number two I was just starting to high school and I didn't have time so that money sat there for four years until I was ready ready to start college and with the help of two half scholarships I got through college with in those days, there were no such thing as a student loan, so you paid it yourself. And so I came out even by the time I graduated. So who was your best friend growing up? Did you have a best friend? At different times, I had different best friends. In grammar school, there were uh, two girls, uh, one Mary Louise and one Clara Louise, for whatever. Uh, we were sort of chums, and I had good friends uh, really among all my classmates, but uh, those two were my closest. And what were the popular dances and dance music when you were in high school? Uh, varied from slow dancing to, uh, I think Jitterbug was pretty popular. I was never good at that, but... Do you remember your first pet's name? Nipsey. It was a little Boston Terrier. I'm sure you had a favorite teacher. Who was your favorite teacher? Uh, my favorite teacher was Sister Mary Gabriel. I had her for fourth and fifth grade. Uh, we kept in touch over the years. I visited her uh, one time we were on a trip and we stopped in in San Francisco and I got to see her. And we corresponded actually until she became too ill and passed away. I found out she was like 26 or something when I had her for a teacher and I thought she was so old. Who influenced your life the most? I'd have to say most likely my parents. Who was the first president that you voted for? Eisenhower. And was that um, a seminal moment in your life that, that you got to vote for a president that was, you know, a post-war president, a general? Was that exciting? I, well, I don't really remember when I was when I was student teaching um, in eighth grade, I was teaching like civics and U.S. history, and that was when the, uh, at the time of the 1952 election, when Eisenhower was running, and the kids were always anxious to know how old I was. And so one of them asked me, we we're talking about the electoral system, and he asked me, uh, did you vote for Eisenhower? And I said, no, I didn't. Oh, you're only 20, <clears throat> because you had to be 21 to vote at that time. I said, well, that doesn't prove anything. I could have voted for the other guy. Yeah, but you're only 20. Well, his brother, I knew who his brother was at college, so I guess he'd figured out that was probably logical, so. But the first election I could vote in was 1956. What was your first paying job, and how much did you make? I worked as a sales clerk at S.H. Cresson Company in East Los Angeles, and I made 70 cents an hour. If I worked a full week, 40 hours, I brought home $24. What kind of life lessons did you come away with that first job? That there was a lot more to life than working for minimum wage. <clears throat> In fact, I heard some, uh, I guess you'd have to say a jealous comment. The manager had asked if I wanted to work three days between Christmas and New Year's when they did an inventory. They didn't need everybody, so all the part-time help uh, didn't need to be there. So I thought, and I said, no, I really need to study. I've got finals coming up, and I've got two five-unit classes. I need to study. I'm behind. Okay, fine. No harm done. But later, I was up in the um, ladies' lounge, and I overheard. I never did know who it was. A couple of the other ladies talking, and I heard, study. Huh. And that really hurt my feelings at the time. And then I thought, you know, in two more years or three more years, I'm going to be out of school and I'm going to be teaching and I'm going to be making a lot more than 70 cents an hour. So if you're content with that, that's fine. But I have higher goals. What was your favorite food or recipe? My dad used to say I live on watermelon and potato chips. <laughs> but seriously, I don't know. My mother made all kinds of good things. What sports in school did you excel in? I participated, I did not excel. What, what hobbies do you have that you enjoy? 
I do a lot of quilting now. Uh, I've done a lot of crocheting. I sew, handwork basically. How important was faith and religion in your family? Very important. There was no way you were ever going to miss Mass on Sunday. You had to be pretty sick. I can remember I missed Mass because I had the chicken box or I had the bumps when I was an adult. And uh, you had to be pretty sick. But it was just something that we did. Did you have a worst day in your life? I hope I haven't had the worst day. What was the best day in your life? My wedding day. What was your first airplane ride? And what was it like? I flew from uh, Paris to London in 1955. Oh, it was before the passenger jets were around. It's old propeller job, two motor job. And it was, uh, it was an experience. Very short flight, thankfully. What was the craziest thing you ever did? Rode a roller coaster up in San Francisco. So how did you meet your husband and what was your first date like? Uh, actually, we were high school classmates and it was just a very casual, you know, kids sat across the aisle, say hi to, and that was that. And then eventually, well, 18 years later, I bought a house next door to his. And so we, I guess you could say renewed our acquaintance, but, uh, he was a workaholic and taking care of his mother, worked long hours at his job, and I was taking care of my folks, and I worked long hours. So uh, actually, the first times we went out, since our birthdays were only two days apart, we would go out for our birthdays, but usually my dad was along and his mother was along. So uh, the very first, I guess, single date, I think I invited him to a faculty party, and then he invited me to his, um, one of the big bosses for his company, had a lovely home in Palos Verdes, and he was having a dinner, and he had, uh, I think, a couple of other employees, and then Archie and I, so very nice dinner, and they had a lovely home. And then we started going out after my dad passed away, on Friday nights, we both needed a break from a long, hard week, and so we would go out for dinner on Friday night. And he said that, you know, he would have liked to have asked me out, but he knew I had responsibilities with my folks, and I couldn't really leave very much. I really needed to be there. So we just started Friday night dinners, and one thing led to another, and almost three years later, there we were. What was the luckiest thing that ever happened to you? Well, it wasn't winning the lottery. <laughs> it was renewing acquaintance with Archie. Do you have any regrets in your life? Things you should have or could have done that you didn't? Oh, dear. Probably a lot. One is that we um, were married so late in life that we weren't able to have any children. Now, speaking of children, there's uh, another family. We, uh, some of the cousins are interested to know a little bit more about the, um, the debates is that you might have some more knowledge about, about uh, Camille and, and his bringing up of uh, Donald and Ronald and, and Francie. Um, what, what are things that, that you know or remember about their uh, upbringing and coming to California and Montebello? Uh, they came, um, it was Christmas week, <clears throat> excuse me, in 1942. Uh, the three boys came on the train and Camille and Laura came in the car, brought some of their property and then my mother had rented the house next door to us. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so it was ready for them to move in, and they, you know, acquired some more furniture, and uh, they lived next door to us for a year. And then he bought the house in Downey, um, where they lived until, uh, actually, till he got sick and passed away. And Francie was 18 when his dad died, and um, he lived in the house. He'd just come over on weekends. 
and he lived in the house till it was sold and then he moved in full time with us and I remember that my folks really never even discussed it. I do know that my dad talked to Uncle Camille when he was in the hospital and he said, you know, if anything happens, you don't have to worry. At the time during those days, uh, like scandalous uh, uh, relations or something that, that Camille had uh, taken another wife or had another gal after um, his wife passed? Well, he needed a housekeeper because the twins were 11 and Francie was eight when their mother died. And he had a business hauling um, cattle to St. Paul, which was a three day process. A day up, a day to unload, and a day to come home. Because there was some distance all the way to St. Paul. And so he had to have a live-in housekeeper. And so one that they had was a lady named, Al young, young lady, fresh out of high school, I believe, named Alice. That was fantastic. And then I guess she moved on, got married or something. And then I don't know if he had others. And then somehow how he met Laura, I don't know. I really don't know. And anyway, they were married. And that was a little bit of a sore point with uh, church relationship because she had been married before twice, once widowed, once divorced. And so it was an out of church wedding. And when he was in the hospital, when he was so sick, um, the pastor at the church there in Downey would visit him and he did make a, a promise that if he survived, he would file for divorce. Because she'd be gone at times, she'd go leave and go visit her daughter in Los Angeles for a couple of months at a time. And so it was, I'll have to say, it was a marriage of convenience. I don't think there was a lot of affection there. He needed a housekeeper and a cook, and she needed a meal ticket. Are there any things that you uh, appreciate, admire about the current generation? I'd have to say that they're fearless. <laughs> when it comes to a computer, I'm hesitant to do anything for fear I'm going to break something, and the younger ones just dive right in and, and do well, you know? not afraid to take a risk. What advice would you give to young people now? Um, study hard, learn a lot. I can remember my dad saying, people can rob you of all your property, all your money, but they can't take away what's in your head. And if you've got a good education, no one can ever take that from you. What's a typical day in your life now? What's the current day like in your life now? Well, now that I'm well past 84, uh, it's get up in the morning about 7.30, um, make a little breakfast, and I do have a caregiver who comes in at 8.30 to 1.30 um, because I have problems. I fractured my spine a few years ago, and I fractured my leg twice. And it's difficult to stand any length of time, mainly because of the back pain. The fracture in the spine was not diagnosed for a year, so too late to do anything about it. So there's a lot of pain. And so she does things that I could do, but it would take me a lot of time and pain and effort. And how long have you been retired now? I retired in June of 1988, so it's coming up 29 years. And what words of wisdom do you have for a happy life? Um, cheer up. <laughs> Tomorrow can be better. Uh, there's always something to be thankful for. Any other uh, things of interest you'd like to, to share or that, that some of the family members would enjoy hearing about that we haven't discussed? Well, I know, speaking of DeBay's family, um, well, actually relative on the well, same side of the family, but Spooner said, you know, I was the only surviving girl of all the cousins. And she said, well, you were the queen bee till I came along because she's 11 years younger than I am. It was Irene Spooner, her name is. But anyway, yes. well, I was a senior in college and that was just the tail end of the Korean War. And a lot of the young men had 
been called into the military and the fellows I had dated were gone. Either were a year ahead of me and they were already graduated or they were in the military. And so there was no one to drag to this nice formal dance. So Donald was home on leave and I asked him and, well, sure. So he made a special trip down to San Isidro to get his dress blues, which I told him really wasn't necessary because just a, you know ordinary suit was fine. And he insisted though, he did. And I remember we, when we showed up at the dance, one of my very good friends was dating a sailor and he snapped to attention when he saw the young officer. I think Donald was a lieutenant, I'm not sure. But anyway, I remember Donald said, why do you sailor, it's okay. So only my very best friends knew that he was my cousin. Again, because our names were not the same and our appearance was not the same. And so I got to go to a nice dance and I had a nice date and had a lot of fun. And then your younger cousin, Francie? Uh... That was when I was in high school, junior year in high school. And I was 15 and I wasn't dating anyone and I wanted to go to the prom. So uh, I asked him and so we went. And again, only my very closest friends knew that he was my cousin. And so I had the fun of going to the dance and um, he let me even wear his football sweater one time. And I was such a quiet little mouse, I guess, that some of the older girls were really impressed that, where did you get that? And I wouldn't tell. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you want to chat about that might be interesting? Or have we covered all the old uh, dusty family stories that are not often told? Well, I'm just grateful that uh, I have the family that that I have. Um, I know Donald and Ruth Ann are having their health problems now, but I'm amazed at their strength. Uh, 